Good morning, and welcome to Valley Mills Christian Church. My name is Joe McNeil. I'm the Spiritual Growth Coordinator, and this is our online service. We're going to pray to open up the service, uh, then we're going to have a time of worship with Mark, and then a message from Bob, and communion time with Don. So again, if you have elements at home for communion, uh, go ahead and grab those as well. Please remember to do your online giving, and you can also check uh, our website and social medias. We've got a lot of different things going on, ways that you can stay connected and be informed and communicate with other members at church. And there's also a virtual connect card, and we'll get into more of that at the announcements at the end. Uh, but let's go ahead and open this service with prayer. I hope you guys are all doing well this morning. Heavenly Father, we just pray, Lord God, that uh, you would bless this message. God, that you would um, just bless all the congregation at home in various parts of, of Indianapolis and Mooresville and Plainfield and Brownsburg and everywhere else that um, our church is. God, we know that our church is not the building at 5555 Kentucky Avenue, God, but we are the church. And we just pray, God, that you would just uh, teach us this morning through the message. God, that you would open our hearts and minds to hear what you have to say. And Lord, we just pray for healing on all the people uh, that are dealing with this virus and illnesses and a lot of other things that are happening right now. God, it's such a strange time, but it's not any surprise to you how things are. But we know that you're a mighty God, and we call your name, Lord God. We call your name right now to, to help us in this time of our need. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Enjoy service. Good morning, Valley Mills Christian Church friends and family. Um, I'd like to open us up with a couple of worship songs. Before we get started, I'd like to uh, let you all know that I miss you all, and I miss the times that we um, could come together face-to-face -to -face and in person. I'm going to enjoy each other's fellowship that way. But I'd like to encourage us that through these um, uncertain times, uh, let us remember that we can still worship our God and know that He is faithful um, in these times. And so let me open us up with a word of prayer, and then we can uh, begin singing uh, these songs of worship. So would you pray with me? Dear God, we come to you uh, this morning with uh, the cares of this world. God, we know these are uncertain times. But God, I pray that we um, just place our hope in you. Um, you are our solid rock, our firm foundation. And God, I pray for those that are feeling lonely. God, that you would uh, put around them the friends and family, um, the support system that they need um, to show them that they are loved and cared for. God, I pray um, just as uh, a church family that we, we may um, come around to those who are in need of that support. God, I just pray for um, our current times, um, just our, our church, our community, our state, and our country, and this world. Um, God, that we may um, turn to you in these, in these times. And God, I pray that our, our worship is, is pure and uh, edifying and glorifying to you. God, let us sing um, out of a heart of um, gratefulness for all that you are and what you have done for us. God, we thank you for your son, Jesus. And it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, um, for this first song, um, we're gonna sing The Solid Rock, and uh, it's a very timely song. Um, we need to remember that God is our solid rock, um, that we can lean on Him even in these uh, trying times and uncertain times. Um, whether we are ill or suffering from um, anything that is um, a burden to us, we can always um, go to God, um, whether in prayer, um, we can surround ourselves with people, uh, maybe not physical, but we can call one another. We can lean on one another. And as a body of Christ, um, to be that support system and it's all made possible because of what God has done for us um, through His Son, Jesus Christ, what Jesus did for us on the cross and uh, resurrecting. And that's the hope that we have. So let us remember that um, Christ is our hope. Um, so as we sing these words, let's reflect on that this morning. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust 
the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fails His lovely face, I rest on His unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. His covenant, His blood, support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, even is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in Him be found, dressed in His righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Let's sing that chorus one more time. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. All right, so moving on to our next song, we're going to sing Waymaker. And this is also an appropriate song for um, these times. Um, just knowing that in this moment, even though these uh, times are uncertain, we can uh, rest on God's promises that He's going to be there. He's going to be in the moment with us. And uh, we can trust in Him um, that He will be faithful and come through. Um, most of all, we are to put our trust and our hope um, in Christ. And I encourage you guys to sing out and sing along. Um, let our neighbors know um, who we are putting our trust in and who we are worshiping this morning. So uh, let's sing this song together. Oh, 
here and turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even when, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who. Good morning, Valley Mills family and friends. Welcome on this Lord's Day to our time of worship. We're going to be using uh, Jonah chapter 3 as our primary text today as we continue looking at the life of Jonah and looking at the Ninevite people and their response to God. By way of introduction, I want to read a passage from Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, that says this, There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is to the way of death. You know, it seemed right to Jonah to disobey God. It seemed right to Jonah to do his own thing. He had avoided a call of God, and that allowed him to, to enter into a time of crisis. And as a result, he had some choices to make. Would he obey God? And would he turn and follow God in his ways? Is it possible sometimes that's the story of our life? We've got direction from God. We've got a call from God. We've got truths of God, but we're trying to decide, is it worth it? Are we really willing to follow God completely? Maybe to believe in him for the first time, to accept him as personal Lord and Savior of our life, to deliver us from our sinfulness, to repent of sin, whether big or small, maybe uh, those signature sins that not too many people know about. Maybe those attitudes that have been forming for a long time and nobody's ever challenged us with. But a call of God to set our house in order and so that we can help inspire others. Maybe it's a call from God to do something, to not just sit on the sidelines, anything, try something for God. Maybe it's a time or a call to just pray. As we were reminded last week, from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. You know, is it possible that we, too, have other gods in our life? A pandemic can kind of cure that, can it? Taking things away from us that we kind of once thought valuable. Is it possible that we have some fear and we have some real dis, you know, discomfort right now? I'm sure many of you are struggling in various ways, and a pandemic can kind of test that and see where we're really at. Is it possible we have hopelessness, maybe frustration, maybe anger, fear? You see, we are at a turning point right now where we can either grow through this time of testing, this time of storm, or we can give in. It is a defining 
moment for us, much like it was for Jonah and then the Ninevite people when he preached to them. The book of James remind us that the testing of your faith produces endurance. You know, last week we looked at Jonah and how life was rolling along pretty pleasantly for him. And then all of a sudden, as he got the call from God, his life came to a screeching halt because he didn't want to follow. And so we pick up today in Jonah chapter 3, starting with verse 1. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. And so Jonah went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breath. This time Jonah obeyed the call of God. You see, Nineveh was a very large city, nothing like he'd ever seen before. Being raised in a small village in Israel, this was probably like, I mean, New York City to him. The scripture says Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey. And he called out, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. I've often wondered what Jonah looked like. This prophet, as he was walking down the streets, what did he look like? What did he smell like after having just spent time either in the belly or the cavity, uh, a nasal cavity of a, of a great fish? However God made that miracle occur, what must have Jonah looked and smelled like? What must have been his attitude knowing that he was in a life and death circumstance and God delivered him out of it? What kind of a prophet would he have been? that through God could get their attention. You see, Mo, Jonah's message was pretty simple. Yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. The Ninevites knew what it was like to be overthrown because they had basically conquered all kinds of different uh, nations and enemies. But for them to be faced with the possibility that they could be overthrown and then to realize by none other than God Almighty, the God of all creation. You see, what stands out to me is not what is mentioned. You see, Jonah doesn't say what their sins were. He doesn't say how they were to be judged or how they were to respond. He doesn't say who's going to do the overthrowing. He really just says, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Kind of sounds like poor preaching, doesn't it? I mean, it's not helping a person really know what's to be done. Or maybe did they already know? Is it possible that they already knew the changes that they needed to make? Much like you and me, we pretty much know. And sometimes we need people to tell us, but quite often we just need to own up to the things we're already aware of and fall down on our knees and repent that's what's fascinating. The last phrase, in Nineveh shall be overthrown. It could mean overturned, destroyed, or turned upside down. Nineveh was getting ready to be turned upside down if they didn't repent. The word or the phrase 40 days in the Bible is a number or a term used for a period of testing. You see, before or after his baptism, Jesus went into the desert and he was tempted for 40 days. Abraham pleaded for Sodom and Gomorrah, and God said he would save the city for 40 righteous people. The Israelites went into the wilderness for 40 years. 40 is a number of testing. 40 days for Nineveh, and the clock has started. In verse 5, the people of Nineveh believed God, and they called for a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. You see, there's a difference here. They didn't just believe in God. They believed God. They understood. They were aware now of what needed to occur. It's important in our lives that we don't just believe in God, but that we believe God for his promises, yes, but for his truths, and for his standard, and for his call in our life, the things that we should take seriously. We believe in God. We don't just uh, believe. Nineveh was a nation facing 
all kinds of stresses on multiple fronts. There was unrest at home. There were riots and revolts that were becoming common. Parties opposed uh, different political powers, pressures from other nations, and calamities that they were experiencing, too, within six-year period. And so the uh, Ninevites were kind of at a time of unrest. When Jonah came preaching, they were ready to come face to face with God and come clean. God was trying to get their attention. You know, I'm not suggesting that the COVID-19 virus is was sent from God, but who knows really? What we do know is that we're in a period of crisis and that God can use this to get our attention, to wake us up. And together for the Ninevites, the current events, God's truth and his Holy Spirit all came together to help them repent and turn back to God. Nineveh had hit the pause button. The things that were so important weren't that important anymore. And the busyness that kept them doing things was kind of swept aside. And the plans they had made, all these great plans, the things that they had put on their calendar, nope, over and done with. You see, they were on their knees looking up to their creator and getting instruction from him and understanding day by day what God really wanted, not what they wanted anymore. Here's what we should say when we face each new day. I really believe in the book of James verse 13, come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a midst that appears for a while and time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. Pauses in our life are not a bad thing. I'm reminded of our daughter, Amanda. Recently, she had put a post on Facebook a couple weeks back and and she was reflecting upon the fact that five or 10 years from now, what she might think looking back on this time. One thought would be, man, remember that time that life slowed down for four or eight weeks? It was so stressful. I remember the panic, the social media, people miserably fil figuring out life during this time of social distancing. My family drove me crazy. Or... Man, I remember that time. Life slowed down for four to eight weeks. It was such a blessing. I found new rhythms. We, we slowed down and we enjoyed each other. We remembered the blessings of each other. We were creative and we played so hard. We got closer to our neighbors. We danced in the kitchen and we found ourselves again in the unhurry. It was so special. You know, some pauses are natural and some pauses may come from God. The book of Psalm chapter 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Is it possible that God's been trying to speak to us for some time, but we've been too busy? Things around us have been too noisy. The distractions the other loves, the other gods have been competing for the almighty God. God spoke and the Ninevites heard and they believed God. They fasted, all of them, and they dressed up in burlap to demonstrate they were serious about their sorrow for sin. So we continue on finishing up in verse six and following. Word reached the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne, removed his throne robe, and covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he issued a proclamation and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock taste anything. Let them not feed or drink water, but let a man and a beast be covered with sackcloth and let them call out mightily to God. Let everyone turn from his evil way and let the violence that is in his hands, who knows, God may relent and turn from his fierce anger so that we may not perish. 
When God saw what they did and how he, they had turned from the evil way, God relented of the disaster that he had said he would do to them. And he did not do it. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for this time of pause, this time of reflection. We find ourselves in a period that's uh, uncharted territory. It's unnavigated waters, Father. Help us each to pause, to get down on our knees, to cry out in prayer, to Put aside anything and everything and start over. Start anew with you, God, today. And let today and every day henceforth be a new day. God, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Father, we thank you for giving us life, but most of all through Jesus Christ, so that we don't even have to fear death. But God, while we're alive, help us to live for you. Help us not to just believe in you, but to believe you and to trust you and to follow. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I close, I want to remind you of something uh, I'm going to be developing. It's going to be every Wednesday about 11 o'clock. I would like you just to maybe together with me, to, wherever you're at, pause, find a place you can go to in private and, and get down on your knees or sit right in that chair and just pray. Take a few moments. If, if all of us could come together at 11 o'clock on each and every Wednesday, we're just going to commit that as a time of prayer. We can be praying for our church. We can be praying for the purposes of God to be uh, lived out in us. We can be praying for our neighbors, our co-workers, our children, our homes. Uh, and we can be praying for people that we know are sick and afflicted but most of all, people who may not know God yet. And so each and every Wednesday at 11 o'clock, if you would just join us. And on some days, I might post a, a scripture or two at that time on Facebook or YouTube or maybe even have a time of prayer right there on Facebook. I hope you have a blessed day and let's look forward to a new week in God. We find our strength, our identity and our character in Christ alone. God bless and have a good day. During this time, most of us, if not all of us, our lives have been changed and put on pause in a lot of cases. And it gives us time to reflect and to think about what's really important. We may not know the future, but we do know that God's in control. And we know that ultimately it will work out for his good. Jeremiah 29 11 tells us, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. The Bible also tells us that God loved us enough to send his son Jesus to give his life on the cross as the ultimate sacrifice for sin. He would rise from the grave and offer us eternal life through his name. However you may be taking communion this morning, remember those things, just how good God is to us. He promises us a perfect life with him in heaven beyond this world. Will you bow please? Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you, Lord, that you loved us enough to send your son to die for our sin. We thank you, Jesus, for the sacrifice that you made for us. We pray now, Lord, that you will just bless, bless this time while we remember the sacrifice. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so as we come to our um, time of response, um, let us remember what um, God has done through um, the story of Jonah and uh, going to Nineveh. And instead of um, destruction and uh, peril being the, the uh, outcome for the Ninevites, God had mercy on them. And when I think about the story, it made me think of um, God bringing his light into the darkness. Because at this time, in this, 
uh, in this time period, the Ninevites were seen as evil and cruel. And it's like, who would want to save them? And just going back to uh, Bob's message um, and the redemption of the Ninevites, that is God bringing the hope of salvation to them, literally bringing the light um, to the darkness, um, hope to the hopeless. And when they turned and they repented of their sins, and God relented his anger. And because of that, um, the Ninevites were saved. And so I was just very um, just inspired um, by this message and by the story um, that we've been given um, this morning. And I want that to be an encouragement to you as well. Um, some of us feel like we, we're unredeemable or we've done too much, we've gone too far, and we're uh, just seems like uh, being saved is just uh, kind of out of the realm of possibilities for our lives. But take a look um, at the story of Jonah um, going to the Ninevites. And instead of um, the Ninevites um, had their outcome um, being death and destruction, um, when they turned to God and gave their lives to him and chose to follow him, they were redeemed and they have the hope um, that is found in God. So let's uh, sing this next song out. It's going to be And Great Are You, Lord. And uh, let's sing this together. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is service where we give our tithes and offering. I'd like to encourage you to look at the e-news for ways to uh, send in your tithes and offering because although the church building is closed right now, the ministry and the ministry expenses go on. Heavenly Father, God, we just, we thank you for everything that you have blessed us with. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for this time now that we can just honor you with our tithes and offering. Pray, Lord, that you will just bless the gift as well as the giver. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys once again for tuning into service. Join us next week, and hopefully soon we'll be able to meet together again as a congregation. But in the meantime, let's try and look on the bright side and keep our heads up about all of this. The church has left the building, and the church has never been about a building. Let's all remember this. Come together and show our community how we should continue to be the church now more than ever. Now, you may be asking how we can help you or how 
uh, you can assist others during this time. You can let us know by filling out the Connect form, uh, the Being the Church form at valleymillscc.org under the Resources tab. If you're a regular attender, you can find the link in your weekly newsletter. Some ways to assist could be to go grocery shopping or getting prescriptions, uh, delivering those technical help for some of those who don't know how to log into the Facebook or uh, check their emails or social media outlets. Um, you can even do something as simple as giving someone an encouraging phone call. So right now it is our time to be the church and to show that it isn't about getting together in a building on Sunday morning. It's about uh, being there for each other. Next up, I encourage you to use the Valley Mills Christian Church social, social media outlets, uh, our website, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all of that. We encourage you to connect with us. Um, you can start by going to valleymillscc.org. Uh, that has a lot of the links to our YouTube channel, Facebook page, and a lot of that stuff. In addition to Sunday service videos, you can find here uh, things like daily doses of inspiration and encouragement videos from the staff and elders and much more. Every single day, our church is posting something, a way for you to connect or to learn and grow. So please utilize that. Start by going to valleymillscc.org. Another way that you can stay connected with our church family is by utilizing our Breeze Church Management System. If you're a member or a regular attender of Valley Mills, you can go uh, online, create an account for Breeze at valleymillscc.org under the Member Access tab. Uh, you can use this Breeze account to view our online church directory. You can set up your one-time or recurring online giving uh, and more. And I, I can't stress that enough that right now it is crucial to maintain giving in this time because this helps us to help the people who need it. So please, please, please don't forget to do that. If that's something that you are able to do, please, please do that. Uh, you can find out more details about setting up your Breeze account in your weekly e-newsletter. You can also reach out to us if you're having some issues um, setting up an account. Um, our church family wants to know how we can pray for you. If you have a prayer request to share with our church family, please submit it by using the form, once again, found on our website at valleymillscc.org under the Resources tab. Uh, if you're a regular attender, this is also sent out during our weekly e-newsletter. So please make sure to send us anything that we can pray about. Now, Valley Mills, we thank you for continuing to consider your part in giving your tithes and offerings so that our ministry can continue to be healthy and viable. You can make your financial gifts safely and securely in a number of ways. You can go to the Give tab on the church website. You can give online through your Breeze account, like I mentioned. You can also text to give uh, by simply texting the word GIVE to the phone number 317-527-4848, should be right here on the graphic displayed. You can text GIVE to that. You can also mail your gifts to the church at 5555 Kentucky Avenue, Indianapolis, Indiana 46221. We are checking the mail regularly and we still have staff that are doing a lot of the behind the scenes things that they normally do. So please make sure you're doing that. You can also set up online bill pay securely with your bank uh, through their online bill payment services. Uh, now there is a few more announcements here, so bear with me. I know these are kind of long, but we wanna make sure that you're aware uh, that there are still a lot of things going on that the church is doing. Facebook is a helpful tool used to keep us connected to ministry now more than ever. And I know some people may not necessarily like Facebook. I, I'll be 100% honest with you. I'm not a social media guy myself. Um, but at times like this, it is important to stay connected and get the information where it's posted. If you haven't already, be sure to go and check out uh, and like the Valley Mills Christian Church Facebook page uh, and any other associated uh, ministry pages like the Women's Ministry student ministry, children's ministry. Each one of those ministries has different pages and groups that you can join and stay connected with the people that you work with, the people um, that you go to church with, and the people that you serve with. So check out those pages. Uh, it's a great way to stay connected. Uh, last but not least, I mentioned an online connection card, and this is a way for you to know that you, um, for us to know that you are here with us and watching today. You can do this by heading over to the church website, Go to the uh, fill out our online connection card that should be listed there. And in, in addition to being an essential way of shepherding our flock, 
connection cards are super easy to fill out. It's only going to take a minute uh, to do that, and it helps us to include you and stay connected with you in many ways. And if you remember from services when we were meeting as a congregation, we would always stress the importance of connect cards. And this time, now more than ever, really, really shows you why those are important. Um, because a lot of the church and a lot of the people here have been reaching out to a lot of the members, regular attenders, and even the people that aren't necessarily connected to members. But we don't know who those people are without filling out Connect cards. So please, please, please make sure you do that and let us know who you are, that you're here, um, so that we can get connected with you. And there's ways that we can stay connected. I feel really bad about a lot of the people out there who might not have filled things out or may not have anybody that's reaching out to them or there to um, to get help with. And that's what the church is supposed to be about. So please, 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 I can't stress how important that is to uh, get on, on our website and fill out the uh, online connect card. It should just take you a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and pray to close the service. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for your continued giving, uh, for letting us know where you are, who you are, what you're doing, and that kind of thing. Um, it's not its not about anything more than just being a community together. And this is what God wants, for us to be strong together, united together, and to help each other in these times. Let's pray. We'll close the service. And I hope you have a fantastic week. Stay safe and stay well out there. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again just for the service and the technology that we can use to, to spread your, your word and the good news of Jesus Christ, that it doesn't matter how many times we've messed up. It doesn't matter how imperfect we are, God. You have paid the ultimate price for us by sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us, to take that punishment that we deserved. God, we can't thank you enough for that. And the ways that we want to show you thanks is by giving our time, our money, our talent, our energy, our effort, our love to the congregation, to the people that you have uh, blessed us with knowing here at this church and beyond. God, help us to be a light in this darkness, and there's a lot of sad people out there, but give us opportunities to be lights to them. Give us opportunities to reach out and talk to someone who might need it. God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys have a good week.